to my uh, experience as a researcher, but also as a project based on, a, on the work supported by the Ministry of uh, Market Consumption and, and, and Ministry of Economy of Poland, because I was a part of the group of experts uh, preparing the report for TTIP negotiations, and we found that legal standards are really, really weak uh, in the uh, future mandate. So, uh, on the beginning, my research question is why it's important. Uh, well, yet we have very limited literature on EU and legal standards. There are few uh, articles. Uh, not so many books, uh, they mainly focus on the comparison between the EU and the United States, always indicating the soft approach uh, adopted by the EU and positive experts when the hard approach, or the very strong approach, uh, adopted by, uh, by the US. Uh, the literature has been made descriptive, uh, and what I didn't find in the literature is, it, is the absence of political, uh, well, it is an absence of political competition between major uh, EU judicial bodies and the Commission, Parliament, and, and the committees, uh, and member states. And that's the, uh, that's the essence of my, my presentation. Uh, my thing is so far, uh, EU presents itself in the FTAs and TTAs as a normative power. Uh, we can try see, to see a uh, transfer of European laws, but in fact, uh, EU abstains from the compulsory measures and full external governance presents a soft approach to, and corporate promotion. But in fact, it doesn't work. But how about other actors? Just for example, Canada. Uh, you'll see in the next, next few slides. Uh, so, question one uh, of first, uh, why are you so weak in promoting liberal standards? Uh, I do believe that every political action, also in the FTAs and PTAs, is for someone and for some purpose, and that's why liberal standards are important for you, but for internal political processes, not for external activities, but for internal political processes. And I do believe that international legal standards and FTAs, PTAs help to achieve and sustain political monopoly of European Commission over the member uh, states. A uh, few uh, hypothesis uh, provisions in the FTAs, PTAs promoted by European Commission stem from the logic of deeper and uncovered uh, integration. Uh, I try to prove it in the next few slides. Uh, then we have strategic constellations of private and public actors uh, who uh, try to, to push the European Commission negotiators uh, to uh, make a situation that when they want to uh, have a covered integration across their state powers and labor provisions in fact are smoke screen uh, for the economy and, and, and uh, liberal ideas or neo neoliberal ideas uh, and then the European Commission is seeking to maximize its institutional power over the member states and possibilities for integration for regulation in of this uh, area. Uh, as of today uh, European Commission doesn't have any political interest in promoting labor standards in FTAs and, and, and PTAs. Uh, quickly about the outline of the project, uh, so we start from a technical framework, then move to a free trade agreement with South Korea as an example. We try to compare Canada, Colombia, and Colombia, uh, um, agreement with Peru and, and, and Canada, and then CETA and EU who created a solution agreement. Uh, and at the end, I try to build a model for your labor provisions in the FTA. So uh, a few uh, a few theoretical uh, elements. Uh, well, when we look at the FTAs and PTAs and labor standards, we clearly see the transfer of course powers uh, of member states. We see regulatory integration. We see the two of the market proposed by, by Nikos Yapko. And we see ideas, interests, and institutions behind labor, uh, labor standards. Uh, Still, there are very important constraints for the EU. You cannot ratify any other conventions, uh, the only states can be parties to ILO. Uh, all EU member states are parties of ILO, but number of conventions vary. So, free trade from Estonia to 133 uh, or more in Spain. Article uh, 153 uh, EU shall support and complement activities of member states. We can play it, but most of the rules under ILO conventions are under union. A key, which means that member states are hardly authorized to ratify labor ILO convention. So even we have clauses in FTAs, in fact, they are part of uh, 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 ILO. Article 3.2, the scope of the convention ILO shall be part of new competences, so members might obtain up to the transfer. Uh, labor standards, as you probably know, are not covered by WTO, there's no option for panel, thanks to Singapore issues. And it's a very rough situation for member states, but also for the European 
union. Um, as of today, we have 58 FTAs with uh, labor provisions. Uh, we have three groups of EU member states who are pushing different models of, uh, of labor provisions. They are UK plus Nordic plus Club Med, uh, just uh, that Spain, Portugal, and, and, and Italy. And then we have three groups of partner states for FTAs. They are developing countries uh, like Colombia, Peru, Cari Forum, uh, or, 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 or rising powers, South Korea, India, Singapore, Thailand, plus developed countries, Canada, and, and US. This in red, they are including the agreement, the signing agreement, this half red, half uh, blue, uh, under, uh, under negotiation. Canada is uh, partly red because we, still, we don't have a, a, an agreement. This is not, it's not public, so we still don't know what is in fact in the agreement. When you compare our association with Ukraine, which is in fact FTA, the treaty is very similar to, to uh, not so official uh, CETA agreement. Uh, what kind of uh, provisions do we find? Uh, exchange of information, uh, labor standards should not be used for uh, trade purposes, and parties should uh, respect, promote, and reflect the relations and practices fundamental rights of member of ILO. But South Korea is a special case. Why? Uh, this is the first FTA after the Lisbon Treaty. Uh, there's no claim to ban the use of labor standards for protectionist purposes. You couldn't find it in this, in this treaty. South Korea is not a party of convention of force of labor. It's not a party of convention of law association. Only four of eight core conventions are uh, for three, four, okay, good. Uh, there's a very weak discussion system. Uh, it is an adversary group composed by the ECC, trade unions, entrepreneurs, and so on. Uh, but met only twice without any conclusions. When you uh, look on the, the similar agreement with the United States, we will sign almost at the same moment. Uh, there's a labor effort council which is mandatory. The obligations for South Korea are very clear. Uh, there's a very strong business development system. There's a strong role of unions who are taking part, who are taking part in, in, in the negotiations. When you take other actors, good. Uh, for example, Canada and the relation of Colombia is a special annex for labor cooperation between Canada and the Republic of Colombia. Uh, they have financial penalties for violating the agreement up to $15 million. Uh, for Peru, for EU Peru, agreement can be temporarily suspended, but if you look on the case of Opinion from the last year, trade unions were not taking part in negotiations. Chilled labor are still permitted. In 2011, 29 unions were killed without any reactions from the European Union. When we take uh, CETA, uh, as I said, it's not agreed, but agreed, but not public. Uh, it's a clear platform for consultation. It's a clear enforcement. We can find clear enforcement procedures. And all these elements are forced by Canadians. Uh, when we have uh, Ukraine, uh, it's the fact of the agreements partly taken from CETA. We can find the elements of the ILO declaration, which will promote for the directives implemented by Ukraine in three, four, five years. And then the Commission has a full political power in that uh, agreement. When you compare US and Guatemala, for example, uh, when the US took Guatemala for, for a panel for violation of global standards, at the same time, the EU gave a very generous agreement uh, to Guatemala. In the reports in 2014 uh, on GSP and Guatemala, there are no single shortcomings in Guatemala. At the same time, the uh, United States uh, took Guatemala for that. Uh, for the uh, for the panel, uh, Switzerland the same story. Uh, U.S. lifted trade preferences because it was a good ban on trade unions. At the same time, it was a emerging debate in Switzerland. The Commissioner de Gaulle said we haven't identified any serious problems. Uh, so, in other case, special committee on trade and development for other EU South Korea FTA, but only twice as I said, we didn't find any serious uh, serious. Uh, Communication at, at the end. Uh, the joint EU tariff reform group uh, has not met even once since its constitution. So that's the, that's the practice of labor standards. Uh, EU, Colombia, Peru, they are clear examples of violations of labor standards. Nothing happened on the EU, on the EU side. What's the reason? Uh, well, I think that's a loss of control of agenda setting by national governments. So national governments are not interested for some reason. Probably they are pushed by. Uh, by private uh, actors. Uh, national provinces are over uh, normative power. Europe must be confirmed. Uh, it's a regulatory situation, but no regulatory power on the, on the EU side. 
the EU ideology doesn't have to practice uh, in strategic constellations. And when, for example, in South Korea, there were telecommunication companies. They pushed low labor standards uh, in, the, in the agreement. So we have uh, covered integration through FTS, PTS. So labor provisions are just in case. So when the EU uh, would have or will have a full political power, then we can use uh, labor standards in FTS. Right now, there is no need, so we have it just, uh, just, uh, uh, just, just in case. Uh, the very question of the role of EU and uh, civil society, very weak political power. Yeah, I'm going to have to finish. Labor standards are very important when the Commission has political power in hand. That's the example of the EU. Ukraine, and I finish in 10 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, also for sticking to the time. Um, and finally, 